Last May 31st, a Monday, we heard the news about a policeman who figured in a shooting incident involving a 52-year-old woman in a store somewhere in Fairview, Quezon City. To make the long story short, the woman died. Last December, before Christmas, there was another policeman who figured in a similar incident, shooting and killing a 52-year-old mother and her 25-year-old son in Tarlac on a Monday morning. Anger, rage, violence. My dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect about these things that affect the lives of some of us. Anger, rage, violence. Our gospel reading for today contains some specific rules that should govern our personal relationships. Our gospel tells us that our relationship with one another should be primarily based on fraternal charity, Christian charity, and that fraternal charity is also based on the example of Christ. The Lord in the gospel today teaches, whoever is angry with his brothers will be liable to judgment. In another instance in the gospel, the Lord also says, love your enemies, pray for your persecutors, do not judge, you will not be judged, do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. I remember St. Francis of Assisi who has a beautiful prayer about loving peace. Francis of Assisi says, and I quote, Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is hatred, joy. My dear friends, whether we admit it or not, once in a while, we all get angry. Who does not get mad? Everybody gets angry. There are occasions, there are instances in our daily life when our patience is tested. And there are occasions in which we get angry. I remember somebody who said that anger is an expensive luxury in which only people of a certain income bracket can indulge into. However, every normal person is tempted at times to spit on his hands, to raise the black flag, to begin slitting throats. Anger is not only inevitable, sometimes anger is also necessary Absence of anger could mean indifference, which is the most disastrous of all human failings. Even our Lord in the market said, Why are you making the house of my father a den of robbers? You are turning it into a marketplace. That is a different kind of anger because there are types of anger. Basically, there is what we call righteous anger and unrighteous anger the lord's anger is righteous but for some of us our anger is unrighteous what does the bible say about anger does the bible say anything about anger of course a lot 
the Bible condemns anger. The Bible condemns the person who gets angry at his fellow men without a cause or any sufficient reason to get angry. There are people who get angry just for the sake of getting angry. There are people who are angry from the beginning of the day until the end of the night. They want to show who is in command, who is in control. They do not care if they exhibit displeasure and they displease other people. There is anger every now and then. In the Gospel reading, the Lord forbids not only murder but also anger because anger is the root of murder. And then he goes on to forbid abusive language. Abusive language, which is nothing more than an outward expression of the inner anger. The Lord forbids the anger that broods. The Lord forbids the anger that will not forget. The Lord forbids the anger that refuses to be pacified. It is the anger that seeks revenge. It is the anger that seeks retaliation. It is the anger that refuses to forgive and forget. Anger should be banished, especially the kind of anger that stays very long. My dear friends, didn't the Lord also preach, do not judge, do not condemn, the measure you use to measure others will also be measured back to you. My dear friends in Christ, long-lasting anger is bad. I know people living in the same house and they are not in speaking terms with one another. I know siblings and it is sad. It is sad when siblings do not talk with one another. I know siblings who do not respect and disregard and ignore one another. Long-lasting anger is bad. Contemptuous speaking is worse. Careless or malicious conversation that destroys a person's reputation and good name is the worst of all. And anyone who is a slave of anger or who speaks in the accent of contempt or who destroys somebody else's good name may not have committed murder in action but in his heart he is guilty of this offense what is the best remedy for anger well you can read a lot in the internet about what people now call anger management anger management but that is not my point here. This is a homily. This is not a seminar on anger management. The best remedy for anger is delay. Delay. The best answer to anger is silence. Silence. Keep cool. Keep cool. Anger is not an argument. Swallowing your words before you say them is better than having to eat them afterwards. Because after all, as one of our teachers in the seminary, when we were seminarians a long time ago said, Father Floresca, may he rest in peace. Anger does not solve any problem. Anger does not solve any problem. And may I add, anger can be toxic. And as we say in Bisaya, kapoy kaayo. 
You get angry, kapoy, emotionally kapoy, it's tiring. And another philosopher said, anger is temporary insanity. My dear friends, the Lord preaches something that is supremely realistic. He seems to assume that people, despite their moral efforts, will at times yield to anger. Then, let us follow the sacred duty of reconciliation. What is the sacred duty of reconciliation? The Lord says, If you bring your gift to the altar and then recall that your mother or your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and follow me. Worship is a sacred duty. But the Lord is saying that even worship must be postponed in favor of reconciliation. The Eucharist demands the spirit of forgiveness. It demands the desire for reconciliation. The Eucharist demands the sign of peace. There can be no complete Eucharistic worship. If our hearts are cold and angry and close to our brothers and sisters. What is the solution? Again from the Lord. This is what he calls celestial arithmetic. Have you heard of celestial arithmetic? What is celestial? Heavenly. Heavenly. Celestial arithmetic. The Lord is practically telling us, when you forgive, do not use the calculator. Do not use the abacus. Do not use the board and you make marks on the board on how many times you forgive. One of the apostles said, Lord, how many times? Seven times? And the Lord suggests what he calls celestial arithmetic. What is that? Forgive your brother from the heart. Forgive your brother from, from the heart. 